I exhaled looking at the board in biology class. Even though I'm now in my fifth period and the teacher let us pick partners, Stella was having a tough time on the assignment as well. I kept looking for the answers in the textbook while Stella looked for flashcards online to see if the answers were there. So, Siblik's not talking to Haley. Stella says, trying to break the ice while I pass the page. Horrible angle to start on but it's one of the main topics I'd like to talk to her about before lunch. Consider that a sunken ship, I say and she raises an eyebrow. Don't tell me haley has been overthinking it. She asks as I write down something on one of the questions. Duh. I don't blame her, but that's not something I'm ready to focus on right now. I want to know how on earth did you think dating Tana was a good idea? You're one to talk with your promised boyfriend. She muttered but I was able to hear her. What did you say? Not important, but Tanner admitted his feelings and I still had feelings for him so why not? She says trying to defend her feelings which I respect but at the same time, wouldn't let it slide. I thought we were moving on from the toxic overprotective best friend. No, I can't. Considering the situation Calamus put us in I can't trust anyone outside the friend group, which makes me wonder what you're going to do. I'll talk it out with Oliver. I say not wanting to give much detail on my history with Oliver. You're kidding, he left us when we needed him the most. He left to protect me from more drama. I'll see when I can talk to him throughout the month. Maybe March since that's around the corner. Sure, take your time I guess. Illumin never rushed me so I don't understand why you're rushing me. I say and the bell rings causing us to clean up our things and leave the room to the cafeteria. I'm just saying, Calamus is no walk in the park. The more help we have the better. Stella says as we walk to our table with our food trays. I don't doubt you had a hard time defeating the creatures. But I think we should. Take our time when it comes to giving out a responsibility. I say as we made it to our table where Haley was sitting at. That's so weird. You're always last. Siblik didn't accompany you? Stella asks, forgetting the fact that they aren't talking to each other. Siblik's off at some teacher's classroom. He was going to join us but one of the teachers stopped us mid-hallway and asked if he could join her to review an assignment. Tana says as he sits next to Stella. Bummer. I just wanted to know how he's been considering we've barely seen him these past few days. Stella says, and I stomp on her foot giving her a cut it off loop. Now that you mention it, he has been distant with everyone. Anyone knows why? Tana says, realizing something's up. How much does he know? Haley asks, annoy you which made this conversation turn in an unwanted direction. So there is something going on. Tana says annoy. What? You guys are crazy. Siblik's just being Siblik. Doesn't he have his driver's license next week? He must be stressed and doesn't want us to bother him. Stella says making up excuses for Siblik. Yes, but Siblik isn't the type to stress for the entire month of February. What did you do, Haley? Tana asks, putting pressure on Haley. So you did spill, Stella. Haley says even more annoying. Me? So you were in on this as well? Here, I thought we weren't keeping secrets from each other. Tana says, shocked at Stella. Haley, stop talking before this situation gets any worse. Why should I? Cat's out of the bag anyways and Siblik obviously hates me so why not add more fuel to the fire? Haley says as she gives up on keeping Tana out of the loop. Wait, she knows about the aliens and shadow monsters too. Tana says catching up that Stella didn't give him all the details. Okay, can we leave Calamus for a separate conversation? preferably one outside of school. Stella says noticing people were starting to eye us weirdly. To be fair, this trio was starting to get a little loud. I discreetly looked at my phone to see a message from Oliver while they kept arguing. Can I see you? It's important. Now. At school. Yes. I need to see you. Why? Are you alright? I'm fine. I just need to talk to you. Can't you just text me what you want to tell me? No. This has to be in person. Fine. Where are you? In the art room. Hey guys. I have something to do. I'll see you all later. I say as I grab my stuff and stand up. Where are you going? Stella asks. Worried. Just going to chat with an old friend. 
See you guys later, I say, trying not to give much detail in case Stella decided to stalk me. All right, see you later, Haley says as I walk away. I threw away the garbage from my bean and exited the cafeteria to the art room. I honestly thought me and Oliver weren't going to be able to chat in school. However, we haven't really chatted much outside of school either. This would be weird if I didn't trust Oliver as much as I did. I mean, if it was anyone else I would have been more firm. But since there's history the story is a little different. I didn't think you would come. Tony's arrogant voice says as I enter the classroom. Are you here to waste my time or have anything important to say? I say, annoy at the fact that I have to deal with Tony while Ethan sat nearby, listening into the conversation. It's not like Ethan to talk to anyone but Tony or Oliver. Chill. I'm not the one who's desperate for Oliver's attention, he said, and I leaned against the wall near the door. I'm not the one who took Oliver's phone to text a random sophomore. And here, I thought you were a junior. But all I see are a couple of kindergartners. But you're not a random sophomore. Tony points out, threatened by Oliver's history with me. What do you want, Tony? And before you say anything, the next words coming out of your mouth should be I want or else I walk away like nothing happened. I say knowing he's not holding me hostage. And the doors open. I want you to break Oliver's heart. It's obvious he still feels some way for you. Tony says in a serious tone, and I couldn't help but laugh. And why on earth would I do that? I say looking at him up and down noticing that his star didn't fit his personality. Because I'll expose you to your friends for helping me out. You sound so dumb. I want you to revise your request. Seriously? Blackmail me? Me the one who helped your sorry excuse for not getting expelled? Bullied and possibly way worse. No. You can't blackmail the one who has blackmailed on you. That's not how it works. So my turn to put an offer on the table. Either you leave me alone. That includes you, Ethan, no more stalking. Or I expose you on the school's drama accounts. I say being firm as I walk to the door. Come on, you can't be serious. Tony complains. Are you? Oliver doesn't need you anymore, so why bother showing up here? he says, making me turn to face him blocking the exit. Excuse me, I say, confused. Think about it, Haru. Oliver texts you out of the blue and you show up. What were you expecting him to say? I miss you. I want you to be friends with me again. He says, trying to get a reaction out of me. We are friends. I say confidently. Are you? Because I wouldn't ghost my friends after a funeral. Tell me. How many times have you hung out with Oliver after the funeral? That doesn't matter, Tony. I say angrily causing both Tony and Ethan to smirk. It doesn't. So if Oliver did something that could possibly put you in harm's way, you drop everything and put your life on the line for him? He'd do the same for me. Would he? Because I highly doubt it. That's enough. Haru's loyalty should have never been questioned in the first place. Oliver's voice says from behind me making me exhale heavily and enter the classroom so there would be some distance between us. Was I ready to face him again? At first, I blamed myself for what happened to Siblick not being able to get proper closure. Then, I blamed Oliver for his plan on covering up Tony's name. Now, I'm just confused about what to think of Oliver and my relationship. We used to be the perfect duo best friends, and amazing at covering secrets the school didn't need to know about. Oliver, Ethan says breaking the awkward silence that lasted less than five seconds. I think you might want to give me my phone back Tony. I'm sure you don't want any more trouble than you've already caused. Oliver says and Tony eye rolls as he gets up and walks over to Oliver giving him his phone. We'll talk later. Oliver says before Tony walks past Oliver and leaves the room. Whatever, Tony says as he leaves. You to Ethan, we'll talk later. See ya, Ethan says leaving the room. Those were the last words said in the room. Where it goes from here will depend on what Oliver does. He entered the room and closed the door. He took a deep breath before facing me. I leaned against the wall and crossed my arms, but he walked towards me and stood in front of me keeping his distance. How are you? He asks trying to break the tension between us. I'm fine, 
You? I ask, hoping this didn't drag on or become painful. I'm alright, just annoyed that the boys for putting you through all of this. How much did you hear? Not much, but I'm glad to know that you'd take a bullet for me. Yeah, yeah. Don't get on your high horse now. High horse? On the contrary, that's really admirable, and I'd do the same for you. Then why have you stopped talking to me? I don't expect something daily but more than five months without a text felt like you didn't care. I'll admit it looks wrong, but I had a good reason. He says but before he could explain the bell rang. Whatever. What happened happened. I should get going. Goodbye Oliver. I say uncrossing my arms but before I could move he placed his hand on the wall. Wait. He says as he cabins me. Could we talk after school? Uh, I don't know about that. I say stumbling my words i'll wait for you at the tracks bleachers he says as he distances himself from me i'll think about it i say as i walk away what's gotten into me my heart is racing no that can't be possible the bell must have scared me and him that's why he acted on impulse right